In this video, guys, we're gonna look at do arbitrage opportunities still exist for the retail trade? And look at some of the other arbitrage opportunities that have happened throughout the years. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so an arbitrage opportunity is really buying one asset and selling it at a higher price immediately. So you've got the same underlying asset but there's a difference in price from one venue to another or one specific point to another. So in other words, let's say I'm buying something uh, and it's valued at X and immediately it's valued elsewhere at X plus a few basis points, then I can arbitrage those straight away. I can sell one and buy it straight back or I can buy that and sell it and I can just make a risk-free profit. Now, it's not completely risk-free because there's transactional risk, there's other risk exposed to it as well, but you know, ultimately it's counterparty risk. But ultimately, instead of trading and looking for directional moves, and trying to predict, predict direction, you're saying, hey, there's a, there's a risk-free profit here, although the risk is capped profit, and I can do this. Now, some of the more uh, well-known arbitrage opportunities that have happened were, if you've watched Rogue Trader, with Nick Leeson, he used to arbitrage uh, futures on the Japanese exchanges. So he would buy one one and he would sell it on the other when there used to be a discrepancy in price. So he'd have infrastructure in price, he'd have a, a runner and a telephone, etc., and he'd have uh, the ability to be able to do that. So there was that. Then we simply started getting electronic trading. You had the arbitrage, people who arbitrage in the indices. So the index futures like FTSE 100 was made up of a basket of, of 100 stocks. And of course it's based on that valuation. Plus there's fixed uh, other things as well in that, like the interest rates of times because Bari, which are known. But the price that's changing daily is the price of each instrument. So what they would do is when the FTSE futures went out of line with the valuation, let's say someone came in and bought the FTSE futures and it pushed up, and these were still, the basket of stocks were still sitting there, they would buy all 100 stocks immediately and sell FTSE futures to hedge it and capture that little efficiency. So the value of those basket of stocks might be FTSE futures price and then the FTSE futures price would be say let's say let's say there was X FTSE futures price would be X plus a few basis points by selling that and buying that they could capture that in between then either wait until expiry and expire that into uh, the, the constituents or they went to the article the other way and iron it out. Now that was quite prevalent. Uh, and then of course as technology started getting better and better, the distance between those two before people were arguing it was getting smaller and smaller and smaller until now that's completely ironed out. Another one is triangulating the currency pairs. So it's a little bit more complicated, but you know pair, pairs are crosses, right? Euro, US dollar, and you've got GBP, USD, and then you've got GBP, Euro. So you've got all these you know, ways that you can triangulate them. So ultimately, what the banks were doing is they would see when one quote was out of sync with the rest of it they work out what the synthetic price was for that based on buying and selling other currency pairs and then I've set that straight away with the currency pair that was out of sync and then again make a few basis points on that or, or point one of a base point some real slither of margin and as technology has improved guys the arbitrage margins have gone from you know reasonable probably I don't know what they were but probably pretty decent right the way down to kind of really slither of margins that are almost ironed out now because it's a race to who's got the best tech and of course if there's free money on the table everyone's just piling uh, money into resources to get that. So there comes a the question, is there any opportunities left for us retail traders? Uh, and the answer to that is probably not. Now if it comes down to a technology thing then there's probably not going to be a opportunity. The only time I think there'll be an opportunity guys is when there's not enough money for the big banks to get involved in. So if you ever saw some asset that was you know, very low volume, very illiquid, but perhaps there's enough to make it worthwhile for you, maybe it's a few thousand pounds in it, maybe it was something then, and that was all that was in it, then there might be an opportunity because the big banks aren't interested in that. They're not interested in doing stuff like that. So maybe cryptocurrency might develop an arbitrage might develop an arbitrage opportunity somewhere. Some kind of coin on one exchange, some kind of coin on the other exchange. I've not explored this, so you can correct me guys in the comment section below, but perhaps there's an opportunity there to be you're looking for an arbitrage between the two, but then again, it's a transaction cost. You've got to take those into account. You've got to take into account your execution. There's all sorts of things. It's not just a clear cut thing, but the point is, is that anything that's got a big meat to it, i.e. liquidity, i.e. interest rate futures, i.e. index futures, i.e. Forex, i.e. anything like that, there's no opportunity for us as traders because purely it's a tech race and we're sitting there with our desktop machines or whatever it is and our broadband lines, no matter how quick they are, we're never gonna beat 
uh, the big guys. So forget about that kind of thing. But you know, maybe on lower tier stuff where there's not much liquidity, not much volume, if there is some unusual thing, maybe there's a, a low liquidity ADR somewhere uh, against another st underlying stock, possibly. But in my opinion, you're probably better off putting that resources and those effort into improving your kind of directional trading and your traditional trading because you know, that's where we can have an edge. We don't have to be in the market all the time. We can find a spot that suits us. We can iron out an edge in that. But you know what? Who knows? There could be opportunities out there. Someone's nailing them away and they're keeping quiet about it because uh, they don't want everyone to know because the liquidity is not that much. Anyway, guys, that's my thoughts on arbitrage in the modern day uh, for the retail trader. Uh, take care. Get your risk money, whatever you're doing. See you next one. Bye bye.